Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's start with yeah with the, with the sessions around the, the CEO, right? So um, yeah. So at at this stage, right? What 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 I think it's very important um, is that we we create a, a linkable artifact, right? So so if you think about it, the, the way the way this kind of operates is you come to the summit because you're interested in a specific topic, right? You're interested yeah. in a specific kind of um, um, idea uh, that you care about, um, and you're going to see something. You go, "Oh, I'm interested in that topic. I want to. I want to participate. I want to, or I want to hear what they want to say, right?" And so the logic is that we, what we want to do is create those sessions in a way that that has that attractiveness, that central gravity, for um, then the the you know, in this case the more execs to go. Yeah, that's something that is very interesting for me to participate. And, and the kind of interesting part of the summit is that we already have all these other intersecting in, you know, groups because you've got the security professionals, you've got actually the CISOs from an exec point of view, you've got a lot of business people, you've got developers, you've got DevOps, you've got, you know, business governance, you know, you've got developers. So, you know, you, you can see that, you know, we, we, we have a, cry, a cross, um, you know, thing from multiple parts of the organization. And it's, sometimes it's important to also bring the executives and the decision makers to, uh, to the fold so that you know, they can basically be part of the conversation and, um, and we can basically be uh, involved in, uh, you know, with, with them in not just topics that they care about, but also actually maybe see if we can we bring topics that the industry care about and, and get their view from you know, as CEOs, as, as you know, executives that care about it um you know what is their view on it yeah i, I think it's, it's a, a fantastic idea so from a practical point of view what, what we need now to do is just to create those artifacts on the website so that imagine you go to the summit site and you go you know ceo sessions and you see two three four sessions on it yeah hey talking about this yeah. hi sorry i'm very Sorry about that. I, I literally, as I was leaving that call, Dennis, I got a call uh, from Sam who needed to talk. Right. Apologies. No worries. By the way, this is being recorded because we share everything at the summit. <laughs> Excellent. So it's everything is open, right? And transparent. So um, actually, so Daniel, let me, uh, okay, so set the scene. So first of all, the, what I want us to just to, to piggyback and there's a number, part, part of this was recorded because we share and there's others actually, I know how to clash with his time, but you know, they can see the video, right? Um, the, the, the first thing I just wanted to have a, a couple of interesting conversation about is what, what are the key topics that A, we, we, can, we can get from a, a sort of a CEO point of view where you can argue amongst yourselves, right, on some of the topics that you care from a security point of view, like what are you worried about? And then the second part is to also create a forum for, the, in a way, the security industry, the security professionals to come to you guys and say, hey, here's the stuff that we would like to get your views on. Because one of the problems sometimes is that in, a lot of time in security, we, we talk about these things that, you know, security should be seen like this from management, and this is the things we do, but it's not very often that we actually can get good steerage, right? From, you know, the ones who actually run the business who also are ultimately accountable for saying, I care about this and I care about that and I care about this. Or, or that doesn't, make, that doesn't make, mean anything to me unless you also present it like this. Yeah, that makes sense. So let me just quickly show you um, this uh, just very quick introduction, which we, you know, we kind of been sharing through, you know, throughout the, the week, because we've been doing a bunch of these on, on specific topics. So you should be able to see my screen. Yeah. Cool. And, um, and, and what it is, is it's just a very quick sort of introduction, right, to to the summits where, you know, kind of fundamentally is this, imagine this place where the kind of best security minds and actually business comes to collaborate, right? Where we're trying to solve hard problems, where you get that intersection between security experts, developers, users, government agencies, vendors, you know, management all together. And where, you know, fundamentally it's about finding like-minded individuals that care as passionate about something as you do. Right, that's fundamental. That is right, and a kind of an environment designed for maximum synergies and, synergies and collaborations. 
So when we did on site, we can do a bunch of other things, which is interesting because you know we had them literally locked in a, an environment, you know, for a week or at least a couple of days. We're now virtually introducing some other challenges, but also means that the talent pool is much wider. So it's actually quite interesting, right? Because it means we can actually attract a lot of other individuals that before, you know, couldn't make his way all the way to Center Parks, right, for a whole day or, or a whole week, right? Um, so this is kind of sixth edition now, 100% online. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the key thing is, again, to work together to find ways, especially now with the new virtual world, you know, how can we actually, uh, you know, evolve the thinking of remote working, remote collaboration, which is kind of what happens at the summit. You know, some of the best working sessions now are gravitating to things that work well remotely. Lots of talent, you know, gathering data, you know, creating collaborative sessions, going to work, you know, uh, what's called breakout rooms and then coming back, doing simulations that kind of stuff works really well, um, you know, in, in the kind of this virtual world. Um, you know, we try to capture all the outcomes and we're sort of moving the industry forward from a kind of, this is mainly, you know, it's still a massive research kind of thing, right? And, you know, we do have great feedback, right? Like, because this is fundamentally, you know, some of the best experiences that individuals have because it's all about collaboration. So for me, it's the favorite time of the year because I get to learn a lot, right? You know, I get to create sessions that are made of individuals that, you know, I, I highly respect. And then you get to ask questions or just learn from them, right? So it's really interesting, but it allows you to learn at all levels, right? It allows you, you can be very inexperienced in an area and then you learn a lot. And sometimes what you find is you find that the most, what well, you think experienced individuals have the same questions that you do, right? You know, sometimes you see that, you know, you don't, uh, you're not as, you know, less knowledge as maybe you think, but also it's a great way for, you know, all sorts of levels to go there, right? So, you know, we talk, talk about this, you know, we have a bunch of working sessions where it's all about sharing knowledge. So, you know, this case here is, is what we talk about, like how can we have a session that we, we want to evolve an idea, right? We want to evolve a thinking, you know, we want to basically figure out what, how can we move the needle forward in these two hours when you get these types of, of kind of brain trust in one room, a virtual room in this case, that actually can, can create some outcome. And, um, and now we got, we got also other user sessions. These are more hands-on sessions where, you know, you drive things kind of through, and then we kind of broke it into the, you know, what we expect the organizers to kind of promote the session, you know, create the content to the practitioners and then the, the participants um, in there. So kind of, you know, the, the, the main thing here you always want to think about is what are the topics that I have, that I care? What are the challenges that I have? What are the things that I'm passionate about? Or what do I want to learn? And those are literally the best working sessions, right? Because it's very real, right? It's very, you know, raw because it says, I want to learn X. And then you find that others have the same challenge and somebody might have a bit of the puzzle, but it's very rarely that somebody has the whole puzzle. So it's a really great way to evolve the thinking. And in a way you can almost see that the summit organization team is just almost like the event organizers that put everything together so that there is kind of a collaborative event, you know, happening at the other end. So it's very important that you, again, you think about what things are you passionate about and what things, you know, what challenges do you, you or the team have, right? So you, you'll see there's no coincidence. There's a number of sessions at the summit that are directly related to challenges that we have, right? At Glasswall, right? That we're working on, you know, it's, it's, you know, the idea to also evolve our thinking to this. So 100% online, we're going to use a platform called Hey Summit and then Zoom. And then we, we're going to have basically a number of training sessions starting next week. And then we have the main summit sessions on the 15th and the 19th. And, and the kind of cadence is all about start, we can't start a bit late, you know, kind of, you know, maybe keynote 10.30, but then it's about 11 for two hours and a break, then two for two hours and a break, and then five and then eight. So we kind of go throughout the day, right, uh, with this. And, um, and maybe just quickly now, I'll show you some of the sessions we already got. So this is um, the, um, you know, some of the, the, the things we already have added from you know the worldly maps so simon worley is going to come which is amazing he's the guy who invented worldly maps right so you, you start to see some sessions um some there's already a couple of sessions on on covid thread modeling so you know this is this is this is very early stages we, we actually have a lot more content that we're adding and um and the, the idea is that we you know now now is that final stage where you know this is basically the the rough thing where we basically are adding all the sessions and then we're finalizing the kind of the sessions that we want to do and we we sort of had it um actually you doing i think uh a, a specific keynote from on thursday 
and then we want to have a session kind of the first idea was security from the CEO's point of view, right? Um, and then maybe investing in security, but I think what I want to just now talk about is how, what, what would that look like, right? You know, what, what are the kind of interesting challenges or even questions, right, that you want to ask the participants, right? Given the fact that we we're going to have some of the, you know, quite renowned also security experts in, the, in here. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I think, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Dari, we haven't been introduced. Uh, so is it just the three of us on the call, by the way? Uh, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Okay, fine. Um, uh, hi, Dari. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. To be Hello. So Dari is actually one of, the, one of our team members also. He's helping with, the, you know, okay. with some of the page creations, yeah. Great, got it. Um, so uh, I think that, you know, for me, there are, you know, before kind of digging deep into the actual, you know, kind of whole host of security issues. I think there are some sort of big macro topics that would be quite good to, uh, to cover and get views on. Um, so the, the, the first one that I would say is talent. Um, and, you know, whether it's how to, how to attract the best talent, are we facing talent shortages in, uh, in cyber? Um, what does remote working mean in terms of being able to attract the very best talent, you know, and a very sort of long list of, uh, of et cetera. Um, but the talent piece to me is, uh, is, is really important. And I think being able to get views from CEOs of what's worked well for them, what hasn't worked so well for them and how the world has changed from a talent acquisition perspective over the last uh, two or three months would be a really, really interesting topic. And, 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 and it's not just about the individual, hires that you're able to make but it's also it's also about how the how kind of the world we've lived in over the last two months and what we think the world is going to be like over the next 6 12 18 months etc uh, what changes will that likely bring with them in terms of being able to you know hire uh, and how we should hire differently and how we should reorganize and how we should have different structures and you know like all those all those sorts of things would be i think pretty pretty important to cover yeah, no, I think that's, that's actually, you know, a massive topic. And, and actually, in, in, and even on, on the security, I think one, one of the biggest, I think, threads that is going on, going on for a while is the whole diversity and how we attract more and more talent. And, and there's, I, I'm on the camp that I don't think there's a skills shortage. I think there's a skills transfer problem. I don't think we're very good at bringing individuals that might be really good at one, one area, one speciality and creating a career path that allows them to do the shift to security. So in fact, you know, if you look at our case with Petra, a perfect example, she comes from a medical background, but she's doing a, a spectacular transfer to security, right? And, and there's a huge amount of talent that we have. And I actually, ironically, there's a huge amount of openness and, and new talent being available right now, right? Because, you know, we, I guess with the, the, the more positive of, of the tragedy of a lot of individuals losing their jobs, right? Is there's, there's, a, there's a bit of a, a good talent pool in the market. The question is how, how we can take the, how can we, you know, create those, those opportunities and actually take the opportunity to maybe do a skills transfer, take somebody with something really good in one area and adapt them to security or other areas of the business. Yeah, no, completely, completely, completely agree. And also, you know, are we going to have CEOs from various countries? That would be the idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it'd be interesting to compare um, you know, kind of trends in, you know, whether it's countries or continents or whatever it might be. Um, just give, me, give me one second. Sorry about that. Sort okay. of live live issues around uh, around kids. That's right. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so I think that that piece would be would be really important to cover. Um, then there are, I think that another piece for me that's very important is being able to is being able to crack the procurement path um, into uh, into big into into government um, and uh, and I think compare notes on how some countries. Uh, have got you know all sorts of initiatives that allow the innovative SME players to be able to either you know test technology in a safe environment um, through a whole host of pilots that are being that are being encouraged, 
um, and being able to to build from there, or even just you know easing procurement process to be able to have the right solution win versus you know uh, larger incumbent, more established players. Um, and I think learning from from CEOs on on the government procurement piece and and and, and how to you know at the end of the day how to win business in that environment would be really good because I, I find more and more that. You know, some CEOs have got some really good tips on this because of a particular experience they've, that they've had, which is worth sharing with the wider ecosystem. Yeah, and actually, I also I think security these days is becoming a you know a potential accelerator or actually massive blocker, right? Because depending how you do, you know, you might find yourself locked out. You know, as we already seen these you know these gigantic requirements that you might get, or you might find ways to scale that out, right? And and if you can get it right, then you open up a lot of those contracts. Exactly, exactly. Um, but again, comparing countries would be quite would be quite good. I mean, you know, the UK has got has got some very interesting initiatives on on that front, and I think it's done a pretty you know pretty good job over the last um, over the last few years on this in terms of you know cutting red tape, making it easier for the smaller players, uh, giving help to innovate UK, etc. But kind of bringing all of this into action and being able to share would be would be good. Then, obviously, in the non-government piece, then I think that there is it's almost like you know getting Getting into the personas of um, of non cyber CEOs and really being able to share best practice on you know what today's CEO is facing in terms of in terms of cyber challenges um, and how to make sure that the cyber agenda is uh, yeah the sort of cyber priorities are on the right board agendas right now and and I think you you know you we would find that CEOs in FTSE 100 you know, will take cyber very seriously because one one breach could have a pretty catastrophic event, uh, catastrophic impact on their business, their client base, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then interestingly, I think, you know, you move from FTSE 100 to FTSE 250, then you go into the private company space and you go into SMEs, et cetera. And then it really is down to attitudes, frankly. And, you know, some people see this as a massive risk and, you know, will be taking it very seriously. And then, you know, we have seen in, in our context how you're having conversations with, with others who just haven't really factored in um, what a cyber threat could do for, uh, for their business. You know, they read about it, they see all the stats, but they, but they haven't factored it in. And I think being able to, to have a conversation around that and how to make sure that, you know, the, the threat that, it, that, you know, that's, that's, um, that business is faced in this space is very real, is very tangible, can bring a business to its knees in a matter of seconds. Uh, yet somehow, you know, you take, you take companies of exactly the same size and exactly the same sector, and you'll find that, you know, one board or one CEO, you know, it's kind of top front of mind, and the other is just very much, uh, you know, we'll cover that topic at some point, but not necessarily a priority. Yeah. And it's a big challenge in our industry, right? So in fact, there's a number of sessions we're trying to exactly how to calculate risk, how to measure risk, how to provide some kind of quantifiable way to do that, because it's still a lot more science than art than magic, right? And magic than, yeah. than science, right? Yeah. And, uh, and we, I think we need to change that because I feel at the moment, is I, my, my problems is a lot of time it's still a marketing exercise. It still feels yeah. like, can I get away with it, right? You know, how much can I yeah. get away? And, but I think the problem is also the market then doesn't work very well because for example, if you want to invest on it, we almost, you need to have a return of investment. So you want to be able to say, hey, if I'm going to invest X, Y, Z in security, not only can I get the security element, which sometimes, you know, you know the, the customers or the end result and go might, might think that you already get, you already have it anyway. So, you know, why do you want credit for something that you should already have in the first place? Yeah. The problem is security, like quality doesn't just happen, right? You have to make a lot of effort. And a lot of times it might be invisible, but it's important that it's there. And you only see it really when something occurs, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we'll be able to bring some examples. I think you know, without without having to, you know, call call names or specific companies, etc. But we can we can talk about some pretty um, live and you know tangible examples of where things have gone wrong yeah. and, how that, and how those things could have been avoided. Um, yeah, and I think that's definitely an area that you know, we, we, if we can then mix up with other CISOs and other players that are very senior that are coming to the summit. Yeah. You know, I think that's definitely a worthwhile conversation of, of how do you define the cyber priorities, right? Yeah. And, um, 
and, and ideally, you know, we're also trying to get the, the national, you know, the NCSC come too, right? You know, some of those guys, because they, I think they have a role to play, right? The same way they've done with cyber sanctions and others. Yeah. You know, we, we should be able to measure the difference between a company who's, who's not doing a lot and is, is almost playing a gamble or yeah. you know, versus another company who's being very proactive. Yeah. We need to start rewarding those companies. Yeah, 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 completely. And I think that, that to me links into another topic, which is pricing. Um, and uh, you know, so so many of the challenges that we're dealing with right now are challenges that have never dealt, have never been dealt with before. And so we, you know, we're constantly coming up with you know new models of delivery and you know new, frankly, innovative products that are being used for the first time. And I think having a you know, candid conversation around lessons learned on how to get pricing right would be uh, would be quite good. You know, whether it's coming up with enterprise deals, whether it's you know. Um, every company is going to, of course, you know, look at the cost that they that they are going through as a result of putting a solution together, and then trying to get a margin on that. And kind of, but it's not as simple as that many times because because you're looking at something for the first time. You're very conscious that you're trying to come up with the right solution for a client and a long-term relationship that you're trying to build, not just come up with something that you're going to profiteer from in the short term. So a lot of this is around, you know, finding that right balance between yeah. cost, profit, long-term relationships, recurring revenue, all of that. So I think, I think lessons on uh, and sort of candid discussion on pricing could be quite useful too. Yeah. yeah. No, that'd be good. Um, cool. Now this is brilliant. So, I have one more. I got one more thing that I would, that I would bring up um, is funding. Because I'm assuming we'll have CEOs at very different, with companies at very different stages of growth and funding. And mm -hmm. I think that um, being able to share best practice on what works best and, you know, what doesn't and good things that they've seen and bad things and, you know, how to get pitches right and all those sorts of things would be, uh, would be interesting with a particular emphasis on what's changed during COVID. And I think mm -hmm. so much of what we cover should, you know, should, you know, I mean, on the one hand, you sometimes feel that you know you can't talk about anything these days without talking about COVID. But you know the reality is that it is it is disrupting so much, um, and I think that there would be an element of you know life before March, life post March, mash yeah. those in together, and you know what does the world become going forward? Uh, and some you know will have lessons learned over the last eight weeks from a funding perspective, or at least stuff that they've seen. I think that'd be good to cover too. Yep, brilliant. So I think I think this is great. So so Danny, what we'll do is we'll we'll take this right. So we'll we'll create a bunch of sessions on the site, yeah. um, and we we'll kind of map the topics so that we can really start you know in a couple of days to really start to outreach right and 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 to 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 reach out to say who's already that we have already on on coming and is already on on the kind of periphery that is really interested in this. But also this allows us to attract you know that next you know round of participants that you can reach out and I, and I can reach out and the community yeah. can reach out. To yeah. say, hey, now you can come to these sessions, yeah. right? And th and then these are, you know, these are the we can start with these sort of these key topics of of conversations, and this might even go for for two sessions, right? Because I think yeah. this is actually worthwhile doing yeah. over two sessions, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the other thing, by the way, just very briefly, is also um, you know working with the big cloud providers because I think more and more, you know, we we are all coming up with you know sort of multi cloud solutions, um, and the last twelve months have just been seen so much progress on, on that front but we're also now so many of us are talking directly with with the big players and i think lessons learned from those relationships would be good too it's yeah yeah not for us. yeah exactly right because i yeah. think there is you know and, and there's also a lot of lessons i think you can learn from it right because if, you, if you're not careful those big cloud providers are eating your lunch right <laughs> exactly. exactly so i think it's also, there's more we have to realize you know what what you want to outsource right and and and, and that what you actually want to move this is where the worldly maps is very interesting right because when you do a map you realize that hey this cloud provider is commoditizing something i offer so i might as well live with that because that's not going to change right it's only going to get better right yeah. with time so let me embrace that and actually offer more of my service on top of what these guys are commoditizing knowing that I still have a bit of time before it, it really kicks in. Yeah. If, if I don't do that, then eventually it gets critical mass and then the cost of change is, is too much, right? And that's, that's how business go under, right? In a way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think, yeah, the cloud providers, I think it's very interesting on that level because I, I'm also feeling that with some of the, from a security conversation with COVID, it has moved very quickly from a yeah. lot of resistance sometimes yeah. in security teams not to exactly. do things. And now the execs are just saying, look, we have no alternative. 
just get it done. You you could argue that you had an office, you was protected. Guess what? We don't have an office. Yeah. (laughs) So so everybody's working remotely. Everybody has to protect. Everybody has to now work effectively in in that way. So I think it, I think also brings a lot of interesting challenges on that level. Yeah. Tell that to every Zoom user. (laughs) Exactly. Right. (laughs) And I I was saying that Zoom is worth more than all the car industry Mm -hmm. together, right? Or something like that. Yeah, I mean, the latest one I saw was a Zoom is worth more than the entire US airline industry. Yeah. Airline industry, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, you know, it shows that Zoom in the right side of history, right? Absolutely, which we all <laughs> want to be. Exactly. Yeah. Sweet. All right, cool. So um, we'll take this, right? And then I okay. think if I ask you, like, you know, then start providing some feedback once we create the pages. Yeah. And, and then we can already use this to create the summit sessions. Yeah. And then, um, and then we'll take it from there. Great. Excited. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, no, this is really cool. Good. All right. Thanks. Sorry again, I was late. No, that's fine. This is perfect. All right. Okay, talk you. to you. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Cool. So, so that's got, see what we need to do. So see, this is how it works, right? So we, we now create the sessions. We then put on mm-hmm. the sides, you know, and that means that, you know, the next round of participants will look at it and go, oh, that sounds very interesting. So they can actually propose a couple more topics or they can try to expand on this. What we have is make sure that the, now the site looks good, the pages look good, so they can go to a, a working session and then link to the Hey Summit. And that's the workflow that we really want to get it done right. It's great. Uh, I think it's, it's a really good, good idea. Cool. All right, let me just pause the recording. I think we're done with this. And uh, stop.